Hi, and welcome to The Bright Balloon, a podcast where I'm sharing bright ideas for your balloon business. My name is Sarah Meyer, and I'm a balloon business owner like you, and I love the creative side of what I do, but I really love the business side, which seems to be the part where most people struggle. So I'm here to help. Each week, I'm bringing you an episode full of bite-sized tips you can use to make improvements in your business. I want you to make more money, eliminate stress, and learn along with me as we grow our creative businesses together. Welcome to The Bright Balloon, presented by 17 Hats. Hello and welcome to another episode. This one is going to be inspiring. I am chatting with my friend Tabitha, who is the owner of Animated Art. And a little backstory about Tabitha, we talk about it in this episode, but she and I met randomly as roommates at Float several years ago. And at the time, we were both just starting out as balloon decorators, and we were actively working as face painters. So when we were going to Float and we were looking for roommates, we found each other on Facebook, and we've been friends ever since. So it's been really fun to watch her business grow on the same timeline as my business, but in very different ways. So we kind of live these parallel business lives, but it's fun to see where her decisions have taken her and how my business is a little bit different. And I I just, I love seeing Tabitha's growth. Um, We moved homes at certain, at kind of the same time. We hired staff at the same time. So I I just always look to Tabitha to see kind of what, what she's doing next to kind of set the bar. So in this interview, she talks about all those things. She talks about her growth. She talks about her staff and she talks about kind of her legendary sorority install. She had a huge weekend with multiple sororities, thousands of dollars worth of install. She had to bring in a crew and she talks about all of the logistics because that is not an easy task. So thank you to Tabitha for coming on. Real quick, this episode was recorded live at Balloon Boss Summit. Tabitha and I were both instructors last November in Florida at Balloon Boss Summit. And we will both be back again next year. We, we love it. It's one of our favorite events. So if you are interested, tickets are on sale now. We will leave the link to that in the show notes. But if you notice the sound is a little bit different than usual, it's because this was recorded in a hotel room on an iPhone. So I hope you enjoy um, this great interview with Tabitha. Let's take a quick break and head over to the You Glue hotline for some great advice that sticks. And then we'll jump into this conversation. Welcome to the You Glue Hotline, where we discuss great advice that sticks, brought to you by Pro Tapes. If you have a question or some great advice to share, click the link in the show notes to call in and leave a voicemail. Hi, my name is Rachel DeBoard. I own It's Your Day Balloons in Redding, California. Um, it's way up north, about two hours north of Sacramento. Um, I have a tip. So, I had an install for a business and they wanted an arch over their door, but it was all stucco on the outside. And I, as many other balloon artists know, sticking anything to stucco is pretty difficult. So I came up with a freestanding balloon arch and I feel like maybe other people already do this, but I thought I would share. So I take my balloon stand, which is, you know, my knot lamp. I make sure I have a weight on it. And then I went to... Uh, my local Lowe's and I got a multi-purpose wire so it's like bendable I think it's like a galvanized wire anyway you can bend it and then it'll take it'll keep its shape so I duct taped it to the top of my balloon stand and then I um, made the shape that I wanted over the door and down and then you have to have um, lineman's pliers to cut it which you can also get at the hardware store but anyway I cut it and then I duct taped the ends so they weren't sharp and it held up great. It um, supported the balloons over the door and now I feel like I can use this um, on any stucco, anything with brick or, you know, sometimes even like the fireplace brick, you try to attach command hooks or duct tape and it just doesn't want to work. So this is all freestanding. I hope that helps. And thank you so much, Sarah. I love the podcast. Pro Tapes is a leading manufacturer of specialty tape products like Pro Gaff, Pro Artist Tape, and our favorite balloon tape, U Glue, which helps you create amazing balloon arrangements and decorations in less time. You can save 5% on U Glue when you buy directly from Having a Party using code BRIGHT at checkout. All right, welcome to the podcast. Finally, <laughs> Tabitha, you are from 
Louisiana. 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 Tell us about your company. So I'm Animated Art Balloons. We have been around since 2016 doing balloon decor from World Balloon Convention because it came to New Orleans. And I just fell in love. I was a twister and face painter then. And we have grown a lot. We were really, really crazy in 2019, which was my first summit to come here. She had all the tools that I needed. I didn't have a CRM. I didn't know what to do with all the business. And and so Joette guided me there. And so now we've moved our family. We live on 10 acres. We have a shop. We have two vans. We have six employees. We're really doing well. And we service the LSU sororities. We did 11 out of 12 sororities this past summer with our Go Big workshop for friends that wanted to come and see what it's like to actually be on a large install or run a big build so that they can have the experience and go home and do it in their town. That's awesome. Well, and I always, I feel like we have like these parallel lives because we, <laughs> Tabitha and I, what it was just a Facebook post? Yeah, we we like needed roommates for fun. And we were both face painters. We were both face painters. We you needed were like a Lady roommate. Bug, face painting. Love bug love face bug. painting. <laughs> R I P. Love bug face <laughs> painting. And so we had some things in con like in connect or common, and then we shared a room at Float, and it was kind of was our that first twenty seventeen. I think so. Yeah, because it was the year that then they had it the next year. Mm-hmm. They didn't skip the year, so we kind of started our businesses around the same time and it's just I always like again not to compare (laughs) but see how we've attended similar things we've kind of gone on similar journeys but Uh they are different different. but the same like I also moved my family for balloons which sounds like a (laughs) lunatic thing to do but like it becomes your income in your life. And, yeah. Oh. It was a scary moment yeah. to know that you had. I needed to relocate. And, and I'm so glad we did, though. It works out so good for my family and for my business. And very thankful for that opportunity. And did you do that big move after Summit? Was that like a big decision you made at Summit and then you, you executed Summit, it? Yeah. yeah. In 2020, I went to lunch with Diana and Holland and I, I just wanted to go eat. I didn't know them. And they were like, so tell me about your business. And I was like, well, we're doing really great. I'm building out of my garage. It goes in my living room all the time. We're doing all this. And, you know, it's always in my you know, in my kid's way or my husband's way. And they're like, that's not really fair to your family. You should look at a space. And I was like, y'all don't even know me. Yeah. Like, And they made me kind of uncomfortable, but in a good way, because we then made that faith, that leap of step and, and got property and moved. So I know it's amazing what happens when you're around other people that you're like, wait, I could actually do this. Like, I think I'm going to do this. That was in November. And we closed on our house in January. That was like a two month, like moment of, before I knew we were going to do it, to we did it. When was that? Because was, was that the same year I moved? I think you were the year before me. Mm, I feel like I closed in January of 2021, which makes it summit of 2020. Okay, so, so I think that was a year summit. after. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I'm going to start looking for a house with a shop, and I really want to get a van. And then, like, within six months, I was like, I just bought a house with a shop and a van in the same week. Like, it's just, it's crazy when <laughs> you so focus. You. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. It well, makes such a difference having that van. Oh, my gosh. The, the space is great, but the van was the thing that changed my business. Mm-hmm. Like, getting that van is is everything. But let's talk about, first of all, I want to talk about employees, because mm-hmm. you have a lot of them. Yeah. And... You have production managers and and all sorts of things. You built out a whole space. And then I want to talk about your sororities and your large scale jobs. Because it's not something I have had or many many people experience. Right. But to get to that point, you have grown a staff. So what are some of those positions and how did you do that? Because I at your first summit, you didn't have any people either, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because it was COVID. Yeah. We could we we had no one. Yeah. And so I first hired for production. So I hired somebody to help me inflate. And then I hired somebody to help communicate with our clients, which we call our event design specialist. And so during Summit, we set up a CRM that kind of like 17 hats, takes in the information. And then my event designer is the position that contacts the client hi what would you like and invoices it and schedules it and then when once the order is complete it goes to my inventory control person and what she does is she pulls all the balloons needed to complete the order and puts it in a little bucket with their name for production and then once the order goes to our line on production all my crew has to do is turn around grab the bucket it has all the balloons go to the table build what's on the invoice and then we, you know, set the decor over here, bucket on the outgoing shelf, and go install it. So we have a lot of SOPs. We've implemented a lot of procedures. There's, you know, steps that we take 
all the time and we're always I feel like it's really important for my company for our production and our install crew to kind of be the same people or have the same skills because I feel like it's really important to know how to build something that way when you're on site and it breaks you know how to fix it yeah but it's also important to know how to install it and how to style it that way when you're in production it's like you're modeling whatever design it is for that install. So I think okay. those are very symbolic symbolic relation positions. So what do you do when your system breaks down? Because that's always the problem that I have trouble with. Like, oh, we'll just pull the balloons and put them in this tray and then the person will make them. But then you go to pull the balloons and this balloon is backstocked indefinitely forever and you can't get it. And then you have this half full tray. And then like, what happens there? Do you have a system for that system? Yes, yeah. <laughs> So we have Sortly, which is in our inventory management program. And so we keep high on hands because of our volume. So we typically don't have. So like, what does that mean? Like how many, like how Um, many bags of each color? Five bags of unopened balloons. And then when it drops below that, it gets on our low inventory report and we replenish. And this has helped decrease the amount of times that I order, which increases my efficiency because ordering now takes hours it does and so now we only have to order maybe twice a month where we're ordering three or four times a so month. you have a similar system to me like you're ordering what you're missing not mm-hmm. necessarily what you need for upcoming jobs ideally you have all of oh, that yeah. already yeah. yeah and so we keep lots of that on stock and plus with so many different brands now there's so many similar colors and what we do what's important for us is we send inflated balloons to the client like a picture of it. These are the colors we're gonna use for your decor. Are you ready to take your balloon business to the next level? Look no further than having a party wholesale, your ultimate destination for all things balloons. At Having a Party Wholesale, they're not just a distributor, they're your partner in success. With the latest and greatest in balloon innovations, they're on the cutting edge of new products that will wow your clients. From top brands like Tuftex, Jamar, Anagram, Ellie's, Premium Conwin, and more, they've got the widest selection to fuel your creativity. Elevate your balloon business with premium quality balloons and accessories that'll make every event unforgettable. Join the success Successful league of professional balloon artists who shop at havingaparty.com. Okay, you're the second person who said that. JoJo, mm-hmm. they mail them. They like send them in the mail inflated, which I am too disorganized. I can't do that. No. But you do I, send photos. I want quick turnaround because yeah. I don't want them to get it and be like, well, there's so many shades of blue or so many shades of blue right. Or well, pink. and I have a color chart, but like it's not always true to the Dude, color. Totally. You know, there are those differences. So you just snap a picture and yeah. text it or email. Yeah, How do you text do that? it in our program, and we they put the name of the color over. They impose the text over the color of the balloon. So okay. Like TT coral and, you know, whatever color they are. That way that client can say, hey, is there a lighter shade of yellow or is okay. there a lighter shade of this? And so we are able to work with the client and approve their colors before they're pulled, before it's built. Yeah. You know. How so often are they not happy with the colors? I'd say they kind of ask for different shades, maybe 20% of the time. Oh, wow. Okay. So not very often. Most of them, it's like, I love it. And you can email, you know, from your phone, if you have a picture, you can email that. You can text it. There's so many ways to get it to them. And what is your CRM? Because I know you've bounced around to a few. I've only used all pro web tools. Oh, okay. You're still there. Yeah, I'm still there. It does what I need for my company at the size of it. Yeah. Because I have so many employees, everybody needs to see the same information. Absolutely. So that works for us. Very cool. Now, let's talk about your big your big jobs. Yes. This year, I mean, you've had other big jobs, but this sorority thing has kind of taken that root. Was, like, this has been your thing to the point where now you started hosting, like, a hands-on workshop, in-person yeah. workshop. So tell us about the scope of these sorority builds. Well, back in 2020, I had, like, one. And then the next year, I'll have three. And then the next year, it was, like, five and seven. Mm-hmm. And then... This past year, it was we we came to about April and we were like, oh my gosh, we had eleven sororities. This and this year. is for bid day. This yes. is for like when they get their new girls. This yes. is not. I mean, sororities are a thing where I am in Wisconsin, but I think the big celebration, the balloons, like that's more a, a southern, southern a southern okay. thing. It's very traditional here. Yes, like, every year they expect it, and the mothers get so excited. So it's a whole community. Like they are so proud to be whatever sorority they are and so the whole themes and their themes are very private nobody knows it so 
we uh, the balloon decorators and then the uh, there's a department in LSU that know the themes because everybody can't have the same theme they all oh, have to be interesting. different interesting okay and so but we can't tell e- any of the sororities the other sororities themes so it's all a big surprise on okay day. So gotcha it's super fun and it's like kind of a competition I mean like they yes. want their sorority to look the yes. best obviously yes. And so they all storm the row, and it's like thousands and thousands of girls out there, and they're so cute, and they're so excited, and they have their big sisters that's already in the sorority, and then they come up as little sisters, and they're all excited and hugs everywhere, and it's so much happiness. And so my event designer, last year, I think we had seven, and she was like, oh, I really want 11. So (laughs) she probably started around March talking to the girls and was like, hi, who's doing it this year? Let's go ahead and get you on a walkthrough. What's our theme? What are we doing? And we ended up closing 12, one backed out, so we had 11. And it ended up being about 20,000, 21,000 balloons for Oh, my that gosh. Event. So, like, what are these budgets that these sororities have? Our larger install was, like, 8,000, and smaller ones are, like, 1,500, 2,000. Okay. So, it ranges. It's not, you know, nothing like I've seen on TikTok or Rush Talk. Oh, I know. Like Some 30, of those are crazy, crazy. No, yeah. no, it wasn't that. But we did have two 26 foot and one 20 foot u-haul refilled twice so that's like four 26 two 20s and then our enclosed trailers i had two of those they got refilled so that's four enclosed trailers and a van full so like we ended up renting a space this year so that we can do everything on on one spot because that all wouldn't have fit in my shop and we rented the space loaded the vans and took off everything had a list we were we had a production schedule like everything was organized chaos we had everybody's colors all set aside we had formulas for organic so we can project how many balloons we need for each design and then we did really cool stuff like four foot by six foot boom box from the 80s and we made a couple of really cool sculptures some ships and what else a giant rainbow a smiley face like we made a sculptures and a a lot of organic yeah yeah and then okay so this in itself, I mean, is a crazy undertaking. If you don't want to share it, let me know. But can you give us a ballpark? Like, what did this sorority event, even though it's multiple jobs, right. total sales, like, what were you at about? Before I had any expenses, I right. think it was around 45000 Okay. I mean, yeah. that's big, but it's also 11 jobs. So it's, it's 11 you know, jobs. And plus, we work on it for four or five months of labor. And where I mess up and I learned that I need to call, price larger events at a higher cost because you have to account for your planning, for inventory, for the time it takes us to label all of our bases, all of our structures. I charge the same amount I would for a 16 or 20 foot garland, which takes no planning, not months and months. And so with this larger project, there was a lot of expenses that I didn't account for this year that I plan on accounting for next year. Yeah, yeah, that is interesting because you'd think if you're making one column, that 10 columns is gonna just be 10 times as much work. And it's not, I mean, something as simple as that, it's like, well, maybe you don't have 10 bases. Mm -hmm. Maybe they don't all fit in your van. Mm -hmm. How are you gonna carry those? They're all really heavy. So yeah, I think more, like bigger jobs are exponentially more difficult. It's not just multiply your time. Yeah. And extra hands, and if they're not, is skilled if you're just pulling in you know your cousin or whatever they're gonna be slower than someone else so yeah it may take them two hours to do something that your regular staff could do in one hour which would take you 30 minutes so, so you rented a space to I prep did. all this so talk about that because i mean you have a lot of space but i could see like my space is a few hundred square feet it's small so that's a really interesting idea to rent a separate space for production how did you find that i went to a lot of different options in Baton Rouge. We have hotels, which were way too expensive. They wanted like $8,000. So that was out of budget because yeah. I didn't account for that. There's museums, there's Breck Halls. All those were just not available. And I ended up finding auditorium at a church that they weren't going to, they held pickleball in, but they were like, you know what, for a week, we can put off pickleball if you don't mind paying this small fee. Yeah. And it was a fraction of what everybody else oh, was Oh, that's such asking. a good tip. And so we we utilized the church, and she was so gracious. She gave us a key and a code, and we could go in as early as we want, leave as late as we want, as long as we locked up. We had a really good relationship with them, and they host a lot of community events there now. So now I am, they're like, oh, you're having a banquet? You should really talk to Tabitha. I can't, oh my gosh. Oh, that's you know? amazing. It's and so super. it became a referral partner as well. Hi, I'm Jeff from Balloon Suite. 
Have you ever hired a professional to help in your business and then found you have to teach them about balloon decor and what it takes to run a balloon decor business? Well, when you work with my team, you don't have to worry about that. We work with hundreds of balloon decor companies all over the world. We know exactly what decor is. We know exactly how your business works. We know about the struggles of order fulfillment and how delivery and pickups are unique, a unique part of your business. If you would like to work with a team to grow your sales and revenue and get your digital marketing done, then Balloon Suite might be that team. And you don't have to teach us about your business. You can learn more at balloonsuite.com. That's awesome. And then you talked about the extra hands. So part of I mean, a whole other part of the responsibility is that you were also hosting balloon people yeah. and kind of promising them a little bit of learning, right? Yeah. It wasn't just like yeah, hired we, guns. Like right. you brought in people, people who, who wanted to learn. willing to learn and wanting to learn and coming to install. I had a young lady, Nicole, came in from Michigan and I called her and I was like, hey, do you want to do some extra installs? Because when you land, we can go straight to LSU and do these installs. And then while the girls were in town, we had another big event, Cystic Fibrosis Foundation had a large balloon drop and ceiling decor and a backdrop here and organic on, you know, alpha lit and stuff. And it's stuff that these ladies needed the experience in. And to see somebody run a job, that's it's not your responsibility. They all said that I kept my cool when things were a little tight and they really enjoyed the experience seeing someone else, how they run a job and yeah. learning from them, you know, because a lot of them came to me and they're like, you know, I always run out of time on installs and it's because I'm too meticulous. And I love seeing that you get everything up where it needs to be and then you can go back and nitpick. Right. Because to me, I only have this amount of time I need to do these things get them done and then I can go back and nitpick and make everything right perfect 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 and she's like that was a learning point for me like I love that and so they learned a lot they were inflating a lot they learned a lot of techniques and building we did duplet pack walls which a lot of them hadn't had the opportunity and so I, I saved a lot of the more advanced techniques for when they arrived my staff knocked out a ton of organic they were wonderful we did hire in extra people to help inflate for all that organic we brought in people from HOMA we brought in and then also for big installs you need to think about who's going to drive a U-Haul are they that's on your dime if yeah. they run into somebody you're responsible for that so who are you getting to hire a, a drive a U-Haul luckily yeah. my husband drove his dad drove we have some friends that help us every year and they took off of work to come and help us and so we have drivers but you have to think okay well I have to get the balloons there we have to have drivers for that then we have to have the bases there it's just a lot of power yeah so when I know when I was a younger balloon artist, I'm like, man, I wish I had a $40,000 job. But I want you to realize that there's so much work on the back end and so much work to earn that money. It's great to have, but it doesn't come easy. It's yeah. not like it rains on you. And earn all it. at once. That's what's yes. hard. Like, because what is that? What's 40000 divided by 11? Roughly $4,000 job. Mm -hmm. Like, if you had a $4,000 job... On a Saturday. Yeah. That would take half a day. Exactly. But no, you have 11 in one day. It's so much harder. Yeah. It's so much harder. Like, and I so feel like the sweet people. spot is like, I love a good $2,000 job. It's like, <laughs> I can, it fits in my van. I can do it alone. I can remember the details in my head. It's no big deal. But yeah, you get up to the fives and tens. And it's like, it's exciting to see those numbers, but it is way more responsibility. Like, mm -hmm. were well, you going to reimburse a $10,000 job that goes wrong versus like a $200 mm -hmm. garland? Who cares? You know, what's the worst that's going to happen? But so what are your plans for next year? Do you already secure these sororities a year in advance or how does that no, work? we haven't, but we do work with them throughout the year. We just did a dance for them. We do a lot of philanthropy work with them. So we have a good working relationship and we'll probably, they approach us or we'll approach them early in the year next year okay. to get... 2024 going. Well, one of the things that's so hard, again, first of all, balloons aren't like a huge tradition for sororities where I live. So getting that as a tradition, I think is a bit out of my control. I'm hoping that the trend catches up here. But the other thing that's hard working with sorority girls is that they're, the offices change every year. So you're working with new people. Mm -hmm. Any tips on reaching out, approaching? Like, How do you do that when it's a revolving door of contacts? Well, typically, they all keep the same email address officer at sorority. Oh, interesting. And so if it's, you know, whatever position they are at whatever sorority they are. So they keep the same email address. Okay. So even though the contact name changes, 
if you have past experience, you'll still have that contact information. But also, they're just like every other event that you work, any corporate event, they're going to write down, I use this vendor for this, I use this vendor for this. And if they retire, they're going to pass that binder on how to do that event on to the next person. Yeah. And sororities do that too. And so once you are in, you are in. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Well, can people join you next year if they're if they're listening and they want to learn from you? Have you decided if you're going to do the hands-on build? We are going to go big. I don't know if we're going to go that big, but we're, yeah. I think it was really good for people to come in and experience that. Plus, we went and did a swamp tour. Okay. So they got the true Louisiana experience. How ma- and, and how many people so, did you have? How many um, I artists? think we had five, six, six, six folks okay. come in, and they were wonderful. Each and every one of them were just gung-ho, willing to work, willing to play, willing to learn, and they did. They learned a lot. It was wonderful. And where's the best place that people can follow you if they want to see that opportunity? Is it Probably on- Instagram. Instagram, just follow an, active. Animated Art. Mm-hmm. Animated Art Balloon. Very cool. And are you still face painting at all? I'm curious. I do here and there. You do? For good clients, uh, I really do. I, I kind of miss it. Yeah, we're offering it out every now and then. Uh, if I show up at an like, I just twisted an event for Halloween because I have this one church that's hired me for, I don't know, seven years. And the last couple of years, I've sent other people. And this year, they were like, no, we really want Tabitha. And like, that was the note on the thing. And she's like, well, you go do it. And so when I showed up, they were all really Oh, excited. that's nice. I know. Sometimes. So, it is. I do miss the I do miss the face painting, but you're not going to book a forty thousand dollar face painting job. Nope. And and I don't do them often, but I do select ones for yeah. good clients. Oh uh, well, congratulations on all your growth, and thanks, thanks for taking the time to chat. All right, thank you. Thanks for listening. As usual, I tried to keep it bright and light. Our presenting sponsor is 17 Hats, the CRM I use to cut the chaos and manage my entire balloon business. From the lead capture form on my website to workflows and email templates, invoicing and grab and go garland automated bookings, it's all powered by 17 Hats, the best customer relationship management system for balloon businesses. There's even a 50% off coupon code waiting for you in the show notes wherever you're listening. I'll see you next week in another episode.